Hey, what is going on guys, Danny here, hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Daira DK63, a budget mini mechanical keyboard that's also wireless. This keyboard caught my eye simply because of its small form factor and attractive price point. As someone who recently set up a PC for a couch gaming experience, a keyboard like this was definitely a necessity. So let's get on with this review and see what this board has to offer. To start off, let's do a quick unboxing. I think that packaging and what comes inside the box along with the product are important things to consider when purchasing any peripheral. The box that this keyboard comes packaged in couldn't be any more simpler. It's a plain white box all around with just a logo in the corner. There are no pictures of the keyboard, no see-through cutouts, no features listed on the back, and nothing about the company information. It has some information on the top, but it more so serves its purpose for warehouse packaging and shipping, so I definitely think some more informative and attractive boxes could go a long way. Opening up the box, the keyboard comes wrapped in a plastic sleeve, and there's a quick start guide. At the bottom of the box, you've got a keycap remover in case you ever need to remove the keycaps themselves to do a thorough cleaning, or if you're replacing them with something else. A cable if you need to charge the board and uh, use it in wired mode. And some extra keycaps. And that's pretty much it as far as the packaging and unboxing go. I guess minimal packaging is all they needed for a minimal keyboard. Moving on to the keyboard itself, first impressions in regards to appearance, I was very intrigued by what I saw. This keyboard is absolutely tiny. The DK63 has a very sleek and small footprint design compared to some of the other keyboards I've used in the past. A few years back when I reviewed a 10 keyless keyboard, I thought that was a small board, but this just takes it to a whole nother level. Comparing it to a full size keyboard and you can clearly see how much smaller it really is. It's like almost half the size, making this keyboard very portable. With respect to some dimensions, the Daira DK63 is 11.4 inches wide, 3.9 inches long, and 2 inches thick. So it was a very small form factor keyboard which I really do appreciate. In regards to area management on a desk or any work environment for that matter, taking up space should never be an issue. More importantly for me, as I had just talked about using a Targus Lapboard for a couch gaming setup, with limited area, having this 60% layout keyboard is very helpful in regards to how much space I have to use my mouse. It's like these two were just made for each other. Weighing in at just 900 grams, it barely adds any more extra weight to the overall setup which makes it that much more comfortable to use. It works perfectly perfectly in a couch gaming scenario, because when you're gaming, you've still got all those essential keys in their usual spots, like your W, A, S, D, left, shift, crouch, 1, 2, or 3 for weapons or spells. I didn't need any time to get used to it in that regard, so that's great, and this is exactly what I was looking for and mainly going to be using it for. I absolutely love using this keyboard in this manner, which is such a low space requirement, and really enjoy gaming with it on the lap board. So you're probably wondering what exactly is a 60% layout. Basically the keyboard's design omits a lot of redundant keys and combines some keys to have two functions in order to save space. You get no number pad, no dedicated media controls, no insert, delete home and or page buttons. Along with that there is no F key row. However, you do get arrow keys, and a lot of those missing buttons are just combined with other keys, so you'll just have to hold a function key in order to use them. That is how they ended up making the keyboard so small, yet fully functional for all kinds of use cases. Now be that as it may, this keyboard's design is targeting a fairly niche use case. If you're someone who uses a lot of uh, data entry work programs or Excel, and you're using a program that constantly requires you to use function shortcuts, then the DK63 is probably not for you, and you're better off with a full-size keyboard. Visually, the keyboard has a fairly simple design. The frame of the keyboard has a smooth matte black finish to it, and is completely made out of ABS plastic. That's not surprising to find though, as this keyboard is targeting a low price point. However, I do have to say that it feels very sturdy and robust. The plastic doesn't feel cheap at all, quite durable actually, just picking up the keyboard and you can feel how well it's built. I also noticed no flex at all with the frame. Even though it's fairly light, it doesn't feel hollow. There's no rattle or anything like that. It's really well put together and the quality I found here is very much comparable to keyboards that I've used, which costs over double the price. Turning the keyboard around and at the bottom you've got four rubberized pads on each side which help a lot in regards to keeping the board in one spot and prevent sliding. I was pleased to see this because as I mentioned, I use this keyboard on a lap board that sits on an elevated tilt and these pads really do a great job at keeping it exactly where I want it to. Even even during usage, I never noticed it sliding around, and stability all around is very good. You do also have two kick feet stands that do provide a decent amount of elevation if you're going to be using this on a regular desk. In the middle, you've got a label with the model number on it, and just below it, you've got an on-off switch for when you want to use the keyboard's wireless functionality. 
The keycaps here are all black and they are double shot injected, which is very nice since it helps with the aesthetics and the lighting effects. One thing that immediately surprised me was that the keycaps actually have this soft rubberized coating around them. I've actually never owned a keyboard that uses keycaps like these with this kind of texture and I have to say I actually really like it. When using the board for gaming or just typing on it, they feel really satisfying to touch. Although the downside to having keycaps like this is that they will be a lot more prone to dirt, grease, and sweat, therefore making them a bit of a nuisance to clean, just something to be mindful of when using the board. Now this is a mechanical keyboard, and this model in particular that I have is using Outimu Red Switches. The Atomu Red Switches have a linear travel path design. They aren't clicky or have any sort of tactile bump. Therefore, while under use, they're fairly quiet, which is good if you don't want to annoy people around you or if you're gaming at night. I decided to opt for a Red Switch keyboard as I found personally for gaming, they just work a lot better. Keystrokes and inputs feel a lot more responsive because of their fast travel path. Just being able to press down a key without much force and actuate the switch allows for quick input so you can ensure you're able to st stay on top of whatever move you want to pull off, whether it's quickly buffing up your character or throwing down a spell or being able to quickly switch to a different weapon in your inventory. Outumu Red Switches are very similar to Cherry MX Reds, but the difference being that Outumu Reds are rated for 50 grams of force to actuate the switch, which is about 5 more than Cherry MX Reds. However, as I'm constantly switching between two keyboards with these two types of switches, I can't tell the difference at all. So the higher actuation force isn't anything to be concerned about. Nonetheless, I had a really great experience with these Ultima Reds, both for gaming and typing. If you guys want to know more about how they sound, then take a listen to this. Along with being fully mechanical, this keyboard also has full RGB lighting, which really makes the keyboard stand out. They've also implemented a whole bunch of different RGB lighting effects you can change on the fly. The first effect is this wave mode where it goes through all the different colors. The second effect has this breathing effect while going through various colors. The third effect consists of the keyboard having this rainbow colored lighting going side to side. After that you've got various zone colored mode which illuminates the different parts of the keyboard with a different color. The fifth effect is a ripple pattern where when you press the key it causes the keys around it to light up and then quickly disperse outward. The sixth effect is a clockwise pattern. The seventh effect consists of these LEDs lighting up from the outside and working their way inside. The eighth effect has the LEDs going through each color, kind of like the breathing effect except this time they have multiple rows being lit up at different intervals. So there's a lot of different effects to choose from and you can set it to whatever suits your preference. There are also four brightness levels and the keyboard can get pretty bright at the highest setting. However, I usually keep it on the first brightness level, as I find it's plenty bright for me and helps conserve battery life. Which brings me to my next point, the wireless Bluetooth functionality of the keyboard, which is another huge selling point. The keyboard has a Type-C port on the top, so you can choose to use the included Type-C cable and use it in wired mode, just like any regular old wired keyboard. I was actually even surprised to find that they included a Type-C port at this price point. I mean, it's 2020, that should be the new standard at this point, but you'd be surprised to see how many wireless devices that cost way more than this keyboard from major brands are still using micro USB, and I just don't get why. So good on them for including that. Now, while looking at this keyboard, and reading some other reviews online, I did see a considerable amount of people complaining about the intermittent disconnects and input lag. And some people even went as far as to say just don't game with it in wireless mode. As I would be mainly using this keyboard wirelessly and for gaming, this was definitely concerning to see. However, I'm happy to report that I personally had little to no issues with this keyboard in wireless mode, and I'm able to play all my games just fine with it. I did experience some input lag in some instances at the start, but I found what was causing the problem. I had a Logitech unifying receiver plugged into my PC, so if I wanted to use my K400 wireless keyboard, I could do that as well. After unplugging that dongle, I found that immediately all the input lag went away. Not sure why that is, maybe it was just conflicting with my Bluetooth dongle. 
However, I can vouch for the keyboard's wireless performance and had a very satisfying experience with it. The input latency honestly felt to me the same as if I was using a wired keyboard. It was responsive and all my keystrokes and inputs felt on point. In fact, currently the game I'm playing with this keyboard is Doom Eternal, and you guys all know how insanely fast paced that game can be, especially at higher difficulties. But I've had no instances where I felt like I couldn't move around fast enough, switch my weapon in time, or get off a melee glory kill because of input lag from the keyboard. I can't comment on anyone else's setup, but so far using the DK63's wireless mode, the experience has been near flawless. In regards to battery life, the DK63 has a 1900mAh battery built in, and I found that while using the lowest brightness setting for the RGB, I could get about 2 days worth of use out of it until I needed to charge it, which for me is plenty enough for my gaming sessions with a keyboard, and I have just gotten used to the habit of plugging it in every other day, which has worked out pretty well as I've never had an instance where I found the keyboard had just died on me in the middle. So the Daira DK63 is a great budget wireless keyboard that's mechanical, has full RGB, and pretty much has it all. For just $50 Canadian, I was very impressed with what it had to offer. For its small form factor, it's very convenient and takes up little space, something that was extremely important for my couch gaming setup. You get great mechanical switches, the build quality is excellent, the wireless functionality of it works as intended, and totally goes a long way. If these are aspects of a mechanical keyboard you're interested in, I highly recommend checking out the DK63. I'll drop a link down below to where you can pick one up for yourself. If you guys found this video to be enjoyable and informative, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. If you're interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.